I'm going to show you what to do with the bamboo brush hog thingy, the uh, bamboo bama s. I guess there was a bamboo bomber before this. I've never owned G Bates, but I guess there was a bamboo bomber, and this is the new bamboo bomber S, which is an what they they've made some improvements on the bamboo bomber. Okay, so let's take a look. See, as you can see, the bamboo bomber has a flat side, a bamboo side, some appendages, and some flappers that you could pull apart if you wanted to add more extra action. Um, and this is something that you can also Texas rig and it'll be perfectly fine. Um, if you wanted to, you can add it, I don't have a jig running around, but you could add it as a jig trailer because it, because of the fact that it has that flat side, it can imitate a crawl type or a, a Helger miter or something that likes to, um, hang out at the bottom that fish love to eat. But for this here demonstration, I'm going to go with the little, uh, what do they call their setup? I don't want to go. The, the super swing um, setup. This has a three aught hook, just like that one. Um, you tie that baby on with your favorite knot, and it has a free flowing hook, which is awesome, especially for baits. These things are supposed to be quite flotatious. So once again, it works just like it since this is a hook that uh, the, the first bend by the point will equal about that. So you push it in there, get it close to that. Notice the flat side is in, boom. And the reason why I have the flat side facing in is because once you get to this little spot and you have to do your turning and twisting to get that baby on there um, it goes in upside down once you're you're setting through and see that way the flat sides in and then once again you find where this little bend is according to your bait that way you could rig it up nice and flat and it looks like it's right along this little bamboo section is what I was looking for Send it in there and look at that, nice and flat. I don't technically have to skin hook it, but I shall. And see the point, I don't know if y'all can see that, but the point barely goes past, past that extension. So I'm just gonna pull it to that little section and then let go and see now it's nice and tucked in. Nice and tucked in, yeah, there we go. Um, there. See, it's, it's nice and professional. See, now that baby swings. And what I like to do with football, look at that action. This thing's going to be awesome. Um, what I like to do when I have little football headed jigs, and this, this is what I'm considering. I fish it just like a jig. It's got a football head lead on it and the swing form thing there. This sucker will float up and cause all sorts of action. Sometimes it will, when you go across a rock, it will hit that extra wide gap, boom, and it'll kick it up and cause more action. That's why they design it with the extra wide there. Anyway, with football heads, what I like to do, let me put this back in here for safekeeping. Um, what I like to do with football heads is fish it like a jig and with a jig you could you could kind of bounce it or whatever but with a football head um, lure I just like to take my lure when I cast it out there I just kind of flip it out there and then I will slowly ooh you're crooked y'all um, don't mind the mess that's my next project but I flip it out there and I'll just sit there and drag and then reel up the slack. 
and drag. Reel up the slack and drag. And that way you feel everything on the box. Boom, 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 boom. You hit a rock, you hit a log, you hit some grass, you get kind of a tug. But you just kind of pull it. Same thing if I'm doing a Carolina rig, you kind of pull it. It really takes a little action. Now you can vary the speed on which you're dragging. Sometimes you drag, you hit something, you could kind of flick it to where you know it's causing that extra wide gap thing or, or the, the, the football head to teeter and totter to where it's adding some action, it's clanking against the rocks, it's make, bringing all sorts of attention. And if you're ever in super shallow water, just do this. Water that you can see through is super shallow that you know there's not hardly any fish in it except bait fish. Toss it in there and have it hit the rock and just shake it against the rock and you'll notice all these little bait fish, these tiny, tiny, tiny little sunfish and whatnot will start coming in and they'll, they'll hoard around this thing. That's because the fish's brain are like, is it sick? Is it edible? Can I get a bite? Even a little bitty bluegill that's only a millimeter long will look. It's like, well, it's got an appendage. I could probably eat that appendage off of this bad boy. And those that don't believe me have never fished crawls. Your crawls come up, your crawl baits come up, and you're missing pinchers. That's a bluegill. Biting what they can eat off of the bait. But you learn from the bait fish what predators do, because bait fish are also predators. They sneak up and they watch it for a while. So you know, you kind of drag, you shake it around, you notice sometimes they'll come up and they'll actually take a bite off of your, your lure. You're like, That's really weird, that little guy can't eat that. But they can eat something. If they get a scale, that's a meal for a bluegill. You know what I mean? They get if they just bite onto the side of them and pull some slime off it, that's some slime that they got to eat. You know, it's like, probably tastes like gravy to them. I'm gonna get me started on the gravy. I don't know, but yeah, so that's what I do. Let's kind of drag it. You can vary the speed and drag it faster. And I don't tend to hop it like I do with flipping jigs and stuff like that, but you can vary it quite a bit but you know the good the beauty of having a football is you can catch it way out there especially this time of year you want to cast things way out there get you a little boat a little kayak a little dinghy a little belly boat get out there where there's certain ledges and deep bumps and cast that baby as far as you can this time year and you know do your little drag or if you got different types of bait that requires hopping do whatever you got to do but cast it as far as you can as far as you can see during the fall trust me cast it out deep water drag it and just keep fan casting Tra travel a little fan cast travel a little you'll be lucky like me I don't use any type of sonar or anything, it's all just intuition, but uh, you cast it out there as far as you can. Chances are if you find one during the peak of fall, there are several in the area. Remember where you cast it, how far it was out. Sling it on out there again and you'll catch four or five uh, good sized bass and then you've had a great day all the time you got to be patient when it comes to fall fishing extremely patient but uh, you know it'll be fine just keep plugging eventually you'll find them and make a mental note write a note of where you found that fish what time of year it was do a fishing log it will help you in the long run okay. so that's my tip on how I do those um, style beach. I hope you all enjoy. Shout out to Char Luna for asking me to show you all how to rig these baits and uh, tight lines, fun times. God bless you. You are the best.